Okay, everyone, so let's talk about connecting uh, this map with our main project. You should have at this point that the dir file is in the same folder as your index file. Uh, so everything that we've been doing so far has been in the index file. The, uh, the various pages have all existed in the index file. And we can set this up so that this is on another page within the index file. But what I want to do is actually keep it separate so that I can deal with what happens when we need to go to an external uh, source, an external file. Uh, so I want to link from the index file to the dir file. Go ahead and uh, edit your index HTML file in Notepad. Bring that back up. And we need to find the location in the project where within this uh, About STCE screen, we have the screen that says Get Directions. So where is that at? We need to find that. Um, here we go, at about line 200, oh, we put it at the end, so at line uh, 239. In this index file, this is where our uh, about page loads up. So I want a button here that'll load up um, the directions. So after this uh, placeholder paragraph, line 239. Let's write get directions. We'll make this uh, a button via the A tag as we've seen before. We'll put a pound symbol there for the moment. Data roll button. Let's set up a very simple button placeholder there for the moment, and we'll fill in the details. I want an icon. I uh, want an inline so that it doesn't take up all of the space. I want to center it because it'll be by to the left by default. So a little bit of styling to it, and then I want to link it properly, and then deal with linking it to an external source. So I'll go ahead and write that up there. And we'll add to it. And just to confirm, did everyone uh, did everyone sign in? Anyone missing the sign in sheet? Okay, so here is our here is our button. Um, we'll add uh, the next attribute here: uh, data inline equals true, so that it doesn't take up all of the space, and uh, data icon. We've got an icon built into jQuery one for 1.4, which is, uh, I believe, Navigator. This will put in uh, this little navigation compass icon that you often see when we deal with, um, with uh, location. I want to save it and run it. It's not going to go anywhere yet. I just want to see if it's looking how I envision it. Navigator, navigation. Yes, 
navigation, sorry, not navigator, navigation. So if we add the data icon navigation, we get this familiar looking navigation icon. Now previously we, we wrote some code to center things on the screen um, and that's what I want to reuse. It was some CSS. I'm going to take a look. I forgot what it was. I'm going to go to my CSS. Let's see, wide image div center. That should be it. So, uh, div center, so I think what I'll do is I'll make a div around that button. Give it a class div center. So we use this previously to center something. I don't remember what it was exactly, but we centered something on the screen. The default behavior is that everything goes to the left. So we made this class that will center things. So I put div class div center, remember uppercase C, open div, close div, and then the link, the button in between. There we go, so get directions is centered. And that was by adding this div. So anyone need any help? Okay, so here, um, our href, if this was a page within this document, within this index file, we would write pound about, or pound directions. But since it's an external file, we'll write its file name, dir.html. Don't forget to remove the pound sign. If you have the pound sign, this will not work. The pound sign means it's within this particular document, which is not. It's its own document. So change your href dir.html. We did this before, uh, where we linked to uh, a website um, on some other page. And in order for this to make sure that it works, we also then added um, an HTML attribute here. So after dir, uh, after the href, then we'll add rel, rel, external. So make sure you add rel, external. Save it and run it. And what should happen is that when you go to the About screen and then the Directions, click the Directions button, it should open the dir file.
So I'm going to go to the info screen, get directions, and then it opens the directions screen. Share location. And there we go. I declare the what page I wanted to go to. Yes, and then don't forget the REL because it's an external right here REL. Don't forget that part because then it goes to an external file. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need some help? What we've got here. Make sure you spell it right. Uh, there's always a question. You're welcome. All right, so this uh, opens up that that new file. We've got a few things to do here, however, if you notice. If I, if I test this, if I click it, get directions, okay, it opens up, that's fine. Here's a few things that we still need to fix up. The design of this page looks different than the design of my other pages. If I press back, that's where I've got this motif of blues and grays. Blues. Here, it's still the original basic... Um, uh, the basic CSS from jQuery Mobile. I want it to look like it's the other parts of my design. So that'll be attaching the CSS file. We'll do that in a moment. The other thing, if you notice, we then don't have a way to go back. Yes, we have the web browser. but We're not going to rely on the web browser buttons. We want to have buttons within the website itself because that's what we've had everywhere else. You can go to the art screen. There's a button <coughs> for it. You can go to computers. There's a button for it. You can go to Intro to Computers, and then there's a Back button embedded there. I want something like that when we do directions. I don't want to use the Back button on the web browser, because eventually when we get to it being an app, we don't have that web browser Back button. We want to be able to press a button to go back, just like we've done on every other page. So those are the two things I want to fix. Back button and the style. Um, <coughs> let's change the back button. Let's fix, let's add a back button. We'll go back to the dir file. dir file and Remember, um, well, I'll show you as the example. We had here on our basic computer screen, we had the header data add back button true. That gave us that back button within that, those other screens. That, unfortunately, will not work in this case because the back BTN data add back btn works because we're in the one file. We're in that index file. And we're basically jumping from different parts of the index file back and forth within one index file. That's why this jQuery mobile code here works, data add back btn true. However, we've gotten outside of the index file and we've gone into the dir file. 
now this will no longer work. We're not in the same world of the index file. So I'm going to show you what we can do when we get to that type of scenario. So I want to cover the bases in different ways. Uh, I want a back button, uh, but we have to set it up slightly differently. So on the dir file, line 107, data row header right there, we want to add some code to take us back. So let's actually not there. Uh, we add it here since it's not going to be working like jQuery Mobile exactly. We're going to write it. We're going to add it here uh, before directions. We'll write back, and that's going to be with an a tag. For the moment, we'll put an href of pound, something like that. So href <coughs> pound, it's just a, a dummy link. Um, with whatever word we want there, back. If you look at it in, in uh, if you save it and run it, you get a very simple back button. Notice it automatically, we didn't even have to write data icon equals button. It assumes that if there's a link within the header, it will be like a button. So notice my code simply is just some text and a link, and it automatically makes it become a button. It didn't choose the icon that I wanted, though, so I could add an icon here, uh, data-icon, and there's a couple of different styles of arrows. Here's one that we can do, <coughs> data icon, and we'll write arrow-l. Now that's an L, not a number one. Arrow left, arrow-l. Question? In our href, if we did Instead of a pound sign, if we put like HTTP, then would it be an underlying link instead of a button? No, it'll still it'll still look the same way. Uh, any type of valid link that we put there will still give us the same result. What we're seeing now that looks like a button in the header. Oh, I thought. By I default. Thought by default, it will. This would normally give you a plain old underlined link. But because we're writing it in the data rule of header, it automatically becomes like a button. Oh, I see. So if we had this line in the body, in, in content, that is, then it would look like a plain old underlined link. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to save that, and just to see what it looks like, I can refresh. Okay, a little back arrow. We've got another style where it looks like two like empty arrows. You can look it up at jQueryMobile.com. It's I forget what it's called, but simple back arrow. That'll be fine. Um, that'll take us back. Now it doesn't actually take us back yet. It hasn't been set up properly. And what we could have here is instead of pound, if we write index.html, that would that would work. That would take us back. However, let's not do it that way. Exactly. Exactly. It would take you exactly back to the home page. So what if we had set this up that from the computer's screen we went to get directions? And if we had programmed this as go back to index, it would go back to the home page, not back to computer's page. 
where we came from. So instead what we'll do is we'll write a little bit of JavaScript that will allow us to go back through the history of what we've clicked on. So if we came from the computers page to this directions page, the previous screen in history was the computer screen. So I want to go back one line in history. That's going to be a little bit of JavaScript. So it's going to be history. Instead of the pound sign, history dot back, open close parentheses, semicolon. This is some JavaScript. You know what, actually, putting it in the wrong place. We need to keep that uh, href the same, and that happens with an onclick. Remember, we've been doing this via onclick. So leave that href pound. We'll add onclick. So the href is still pound. It's not going anywhere, it's, but it's acting like a link. Then what we want is when we click it on click, then run this JavaScript command, history.back. And we have a variety of things we can do in history. We can have history.something. We could say history.back two pages. We can jump back two pages in history. I wouldn't do that because I don't know where the user came from. But I know that if I say history.back, they came from at least one other page. Wherever they came from, take us back to that screen. So if they had come from the computer screen, take us back to computer screen. That's why I did not hard code a value here, index.html, because that would have taken you back exactly to the index. You could have done index.html pound home. That could work, too. We could append the actual location of the data roll of page to the file. But again, that gets us stuck, that what if we came from the PC screen? We can write some dynamic code that it knows where it came from. Too much effort. So here, if we just have on click history.back, it'll take us back to the previous, to the previous screen. But you can actually only get to the screen from one place, though. In our case, yes, but I'm sort of showing you some more generic code that could apply if we use it in other ways. Yes. So when I hit that, it didn't take me back to the pop-up. It took me back to the home screen. You know what? I noticed that depending on the web browser, unfortunately. So let me test this just to see what it looks like on mine. I'm going to go with Firefox. Go here, get directions, press back. It takes me to my pop-up. So we can't quite account for every single possibility, unfortunately. If it does take you back to the index, um, there are worse things. There are worse things, yes. So here it is going back to my previous pop-up. Let me try it on Internet Explorer. There are worse things. You may not have the navigator up there. No, there you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. I didn't know I was near Palo Verde Terrace. Where is this place? Chili's Bar and Grill? Qualcomm? Interesting. Internet Explorer thinks I'm near Qualcomm Stadium. Anyway, so I'll press back, and that went to the index. So yeah, it didn't go back to the exact pop-up, but there's worse things, such as telling me that I'm in near Qualcomm Stadium. <laughs> question? No, the question is the same. If you pull out a pop-up once, it's only more bad to pull out a pop-up. The pop-up got the full and the only one. You mean when it came up here a moment ago and I clicked allow once? Ah. Oh. 
But I believe what it was asking for was asking for location, I think. Hmm. Well, this is what happens when we're, we're web designers. We don't have full control of every aspect of things, unfortunately. All right, so that was uh, history.back. We went back to that work for everyone. Anyone uh, need some help? So one thing you could do then in, in labeling your button, instead of just saying back, you could say back to home screen, and then just hard code it to take you back to the home screen. You could. And that way, it would probably act correctly on all the browsers. Yeah, that's one way to think of it. All right, so our back button seems to work now. Very good. Uh, this way is playing with the history of the uh, of your of your browsing, so it goes back to your previous screen. Now, what I want to deal with is the design of the dir screen does not look like my index screen. It's not getting those colors. That's pretty simple fix because if you recall, if you go back to index, we've got references, specifically line 13. This is the index file. Line 13 has a link, has a reference to a style sheet where we defined our unique colors. We don't have that reference in the dir file. So let's do a little copy and paste here. Go back to your index and you can copy line 13, 12 if you want, there's the comment, but I'll just do line 13, lucky 13, copy line 13, and we'll put it in about the same place in our uh, in our dir file which is uh if you see here we've got the jquery css file right gets loaded first 
then we load up our unique CSS and then the jQuery JS files, JavaScript. So I'm going to copy line 13 from index over on the dir file. I, I need to find approximately the same place, which is in this case line 9. Line 9 has the jQuery CSS file, jQuery mobile CSS file. So I can snuggle it in right there, line 10. So now here is my custom code, my custom colors that are going to be applied to this, uh, this other separate file. This is why we would want to have a centralized location for our CSS or JavaScript files or code so that we can connect those files to many files that we want and they all behave the same. So okay, I want to see that. I want to save that. Uh, remember, run the index. If you if you wrote your correct code and you run your in you run your directions file and your back button doesn't work, that's because there's no back history to go to. If you load the directions file, there's no back history. So remember to run from index. Okay, here's index. Open that up. Get directions. There we go. There's the style there. Although I wasn't expecting that color there, but it goes away, I guess, when you actually load the map. So I've got the blue at the top, I've got the uh, gray in the back, and then this has that color too. And I press back, goes back. Yes, but we probably won't run into that into that condition. The only way to get to directions screen is by clicking a button to get there. So there should be no way to get to the directions without coming from somewhere. What we're seeing is that yeah, if I go to if I if from dir I run it from here. Yes, there's no way back, and I would want some sort of if else. But there's no way I'm going to get to this unless I come from somewhere. But that's a good thinking there. Try to cover all bases. I'm just kind of feeling a little lazy. I don't want to write more code. All right. So did that work for everyone? Did you get your new style? So, any questions so far? We're going to change gears a little bit, still JavaScript stuff. Um, but any, any questions on what we've looked at so far today? We've um, worked with this, with this uh, map feature. Okay, so here's what I want to shift gears to. I want to be able for the user to customize the app. Uh, there's a variety of ways we can do this, of course, but we'll, we'll start off this way. We'll say that we'll, have, we'll give the user the ability to, to write their name, and it'll be customized that it'll say the person's name within the app, within the website. So I'm thinking over here under the under the About screen, we can add another button that says Customize. And when someone clicks that, it pops up to say, Type your name. 
and then once their name has been added, then it'll say wherever we want, it'll say welcome Victor, instead of just welcome. Wherever we want, we can say the person's name, such as become an artist, Victor. Uh, learn about computers, Victor. You know, customize it so that the person's name shows up wherever we want within the app. So we've got a few things we want to do to accomplish that. We want to capture the person's name. We've looked at something like that before. And then we wanted to display that name in various parts of the website, which eventually will be an app. Um, but then that'll eventually get us to an issue that we need to resolve about um, permanence. We'll be able to do this, but spoiler alert, when someone closes the web browser, it'll forget the name by default. I then want to add some permanence to this so that when a person writes their name, it stays there even when they come back after they close the web browser completely. This is sort of related to cookies, but specifically it's the next level of cookies, which is, uh, which is called HTML5 storage which is a new feature of HTML5, like geolocation. Geolocation didn't exist a few years ago. Now with HTML5, we can tap into GPS. We've always had cookies for a long time, but cookies are also have their limitations, as in the amount of data they can store, like 5 kilobytes or so. With local storage, HTML5 storage, uh, we are able to save several megabytes of data. So think about maybe... Uh, large databases of data or, or graphical data. Eventually we'll be able to turn this into an app where we will be able to take a photo. We want to store that photo perhaps. So we'll look at those types of things. This is all, this all relates to um, this is like the tip of the iceberg of some stuff that we'll be talking about eventually for databases which are permanent collections of data. So Here's what I want to do. Um, first we'll do it the dumb way and then we'll do it the smart way. Uh, what I want to do is I want to capture uh, capture the person's name. So, okay, let's take a moment to create a button in this screen here about customize. So let's go back to our index page all the way at the bottom. We've got a button there that is for the get direction so uh, let's try it this way let's add with it stay staying within the staying within this div of div center because I also want to center the next button I'm about to create add a break there so that it doesn't stay on the same line so the buttons are not next to each other we could if we want but I want one button here and one button second customize make that in a tag href pound symbol data roll button basically the same as the above one data inline true you can copy and paste change it a little bit data icon, there's an icon built in called user, which will give a little silhouette of a person. So someone sees the button right away and they see, okay, person, user, customization, perhaps. So this button will allow for, for some customization. see if this is looking correctly so just run it there we go customize and this is going to be this is all going to be handled via JavaScript when someone clicks this button we're going to run a function to make the pop-up appear enter your name 
that name will be stored in a variable and then the name will be used as necessary throughout the app throughout the website so did that work for everyone you've got your simple button there as I said this is gonna run a function so we'll say here after the href on click the name of function which currently doesn't exist we will call this function customize open close parentheses semicolon customize so in a moment we're gonna create a function called customize and we're gonna tell it to do a bunch of things now we've been writing our custom CSS in that Codica extra.css file. We're going to do something similar with our JavaScript, our custom JavaScript. We're going to write it in the codica.extra.js file. Because remember, at the top of our document, we have this reference to this script file, codica.extra.js. So in Notepad, go ahead and open codica.extra.js not the CSS, be careful we're not going to write CSS, we're going to write JavaScript so let's edit this codica.ext.js file in Notepad Notepad++ put your custom code here Right, so we need to define a new function. So we'll write function. What was the name we gave it a moment ago? Customize. Customize. Open close parentheses, open close curly braces, semicolon. So now we're going to define what does it mean when someone clicks that button? And then an, on an on click, we run customize. Uh, we're going to ask for the person to write uh, to write their name. So one of the fastest ways to do that is we've got a built-in method prompt. Remember this one from last week? Prompt will make a pop-up happen, but it'll have a space for the person to add their name. The message that we that appears on that screen we can say it here in quotes uh, we'll say please enter your name So this is the message that's going to appear in the pop-up. It will automatically then display an input box where a person can write their name. There'll be a cancel and an OK. At this point, I want to see if it's working so far, because a few things could go wrong. We are writing our code in a separate file. Maybe we mistyped the name of the file in the index file. Maybe we mistyped the name of the function. Maybe I called it customizer inside of the index file, and I called it customize here. So, I just want to see if we're, if we're working so far. Save it and run your index file. Save all, actually. Remember, you've got the Save All button right there, because we're working with more than one file now. Save all. Let's run the index. Here's the Customize button. Click it. Pop up. Enter your name. If it's working... If it's working at least at this point, we can go on, but anyone need some help? I'm trying to see which one of you was faster on the draw. I almost saw it at the same time.
All right, so at least, at least this is popping up, and now we can deal with capturing this text. Uh, so remember, what we can do is, if we create a variable, we can capture what comes out of the prompt. So let me show you a little shorthand here. We could do this all in one line. Let's go back to this line where we've got prompt, and we'll write var equals, uh, we'll call this uh, user name equals. So I added this to the left of prompt. That's, a, that's my shortcut. What, the way we could have also done it is, first define var username, semicolon, then say fill username with prompt. Okay, two lines, a little bit extra writing there, or the way I just showed you right now, under one line we've created the variable and filled it at the same time. So now we've captured the, the person's name. Uh, and we can use it then throughout the, the website once it's captured that way. So what we'll do is we will, we will display it, for example, 
um, here's one way we'll display it where the home where it says welcome so just to remind us right here we've got welcome I wanted to say welcome Victor or whatever name a person types so uh, this will need a little bit of setup because the JavaScript doesn't know that there's anything on the screen called welcome. It doesn't know that that location in the document exists because we did not give it an ID. So again, IDs come back uh, so that we can, uh, we can work with it in JavaScript. So actually we need to go back to our index file and name this section here ID. Uh, we need to give it an ID, that is. So we'll go back to index. Let's look somewhere. Where, where do we have our welcome? There it is under welcome. Line 52. It's an H2. That's fine. We can still give it an ID. We'll call this welcome message, MSG. Okay, so now we've um, now we can make JavaScript aware of that. Without the ID, JavaScript doesn't know what to work with. There's other ways, of course, but uh, now we're targeting specifically that message throughout our project. So make sure you you add this ID welcome message. Line 52. Make sure you save this file, and let's go back to the JavaScript. And now we'll say we saw, we've saw we seen this before. Now we'll apply it. Remember, document.get.elementById. We're going to reference something within our document by its ID. So in parentheses, in quotes, we're going to reference that ID we just wrote. Within the document, we're going to get an element by its ID. We just gave it an ID, welcome message. And what we want to do here then is say dot inner HTML, all in caps. We're going to change the code that is inside of the, that h2 tag. We're going to rewrite what is there, because now we've captured the person's name. It's being stored right here, username. So in quotes after the equals, remember the equals is basically take the thing on the right, put it into the thing on the left. The thing on the left is that welcome message, the h2. Specifically, it's inner HTML. We'll make it say welcome, just like already exists there. Space, or comma, space. And I'm adding a space right there because if I don't put the space, it'll say welcome, comma, Victor with no space. The words will be right next to each other. The word welcome and the variable value. With that space, there will be a space. After that quote, space, Plus, we saw plus before, put this thing next to this thing, plus next to this thing. So basically put elements next to each other. Username, semicolon. So this is going to display on screen, welcome, comma, whatever is inside of the username, whatever the person typed. Question? In, instead of retyping what's there, the quote welcome comma quotes. Could you type again document get element? So basically what it would say whatever's there now, add username to the end of it? Possibly, but again we're doing it the dumb way. There's other ways to do it where you you will get perhaps better results. But let's do it the most basic way first and then we'll see other ways to do it. 
so let's let's see if this works. This should be enough so far. Uh, we've captured the person's name and stored it here, and then on the next line, display it on the screen where we told it to. So remember to save all, run your index file again. I'm going to click the info, customize, please enter your name, Victor, click OK, go back, welcome Victor. Raise your hand if it worked. If it worked. If it worked. If it worked, then take that same hand and then pat your back, pat your back with it. Now, if it didn't work, raise your hand. Okay, in my code so far, a couple of things could have happened. Remember, check that your welcome message is spelled properly there, because it won't know where to put the variable.
All right, so um, this works. Notice we we get oops, we get the name shows up, no problem. Um, the problem then comes in if if I close it and and load up the file again, it doesn't remember the name. It goes back to normal. So it only worked while we were within the site. Now later on when this becomes an app we'll see that if we close the app the same thing would happen. It would, re it would forget that your name. So we're going to talk then about saving our data a little bit more permanently. So let's look at this uh, documentation a bit and then we'll implement it. This is called uh, storage or local storage. Uh, on your web browser, let's go to uh, let's go to w3schools.com. Remember, we went there to read about the geolocation. So w3schools.com, and again, we'll go to the HTML5 section because this is a new HTML5 bit of code. 
So that means it's not going to work on older versions of the browsers like those poor Internet Explorer 7 people. It's not going to work for them. And Firefox 4.0, it's not going to work for them. But um, here's what we do. So, so go into the uh, Learn HTML5 section on the left side. And you want to scroll down on the left. Eventually, you'll get to HTML5 APIs, and you'll see local storage. Let's see how this works. Local storage, it's an HTML5 construct. All the web browsers nowadays pretty much work with it, no problem. With HTML5 local storage, web pages can store data locally within the user's browser. So the data is going to be saved into the browser itself rather than as a cookie file that is found in the usual locations of the hard drive. Earlier this was done with cookies. However, local storage is a more secure and faster way. The data is not included with every server request, but used only when asked for it. It's also possible to store large amounts of data without affecting the website's performance. The data is stored in simple name-value pairs, and a web page can only access data stored by itself. Uh, so for security reasons, whatever data that our website creates, only that data it can access later on. It cannot access data from another website. Um, and notice also, unlike cookies, the storage limit is far larger, at least 5 megabytes. So text information is very compact, like our whole index file right now. <coughs> The whole index file that we're working with is uh, about 7 kilobytes. Uh, so everything that we've been doing so far is only 7 kilobytes. This is saying that local storage can hold 5 megabytes, which is 5,000 kilobytes. So what is that, like 50 versions or 500 versions of our website, of our project, can be stored here. And at that size, we can hold a lot of data like a database. And so notice if any of you have any experience in, uh, in, uh, in databases, it uses a name-value pair, which if you're more used to something more powerful like SQL or MySQL or something more powerful, that might be a little bit limiting. It's just key and name and value pairs, key and, and, the, and the value. So it's not going to be able to solve all of our database issues. This is just a very simple way to save some data. We will later on talk about a much more powerful method. If you want to start researching it on your own, eventually we're going to get to something called CouchDB. But if you're not quite at that level yet, don't worry about it yet. We'll get to it. But if you want to start researching, we're going to look at something called CouchDB eventually. Question? Can you use global storage? Is this what like, the, the stuff is like when it's remember names? Is that what it's based on? It could be used for that, but also cookies were used for that, too, in the old days. This is just some way to save some data. We could save some data that had the person, it could say username, Victor. It could say uh, visited on April 2nd. It could say remember me, no. And it's going to remember some key and some value. And then with that data stored, then we can do if-else stuff. If uh, remembered is yes, then do this. If remembered is no, do that. So does that start to the particular browser? Yes. Or to the it saves to the browser. So in our case, if I'm running this on Firefox, it's going to remember my name. If I open the exact same file, index, in Chrome, it's not going to remember the name because it was a different browser. But eventually, when we load it up on our mobile device, there's only one app that's going to run. So it's going to be stored on our app it will always remember our name. So there are some limitations to this, but at least we'll be able to save data in a more permanent fashion. Question. In Internet Explorer, when you, when you do things with cookies, it, there's settings where you can allow cookies or disallow cookies or prompts you, you want to do it. Does, it, does the same thing happen with local storage? Uh, local storage, there is a way Every web browser has a way to limit the amount of local storage or expand it or clear it out. And I believe also they have a way to disable it. Most web browsers nowadays have this turned on, and a text, 
a tech savvy, web savvy user would have to go into their settings and turn it off. So, as we can see in the documentation here, there will be a way. Let's check, first of all, if local storage is enabled. If it's not enabled, then we give an error message that says your data will not be stored. If there is local storage capability, then we'll work as normal. But yeah, people always have the. Uh, so if the people. User may or may not get prompted that you're storing stuff. Most likely what we would do is we would not prompt if it works, if local storage is available, and we would prompt them if local storage is not available. But I mean the browser doesn't tell them. Oh no, hey, the browser. App is trying to store stuff. I don't believe so. No, I, I believe it's pretty seamless nowadays that it'll just work if it works. Browser support, pretty universal nowadays. So here's right away what it says, local storage objects. Um, before using local storage, it's a good idea to check browser support for local storage and session storage. There's two things here, local storage, session storage. Local storage is the one that is permanent. That once I save that username and close my web browser and open it again, it's still saved. Local storage. Session storage is what we've got now, which I don't think is very useful. The person saves their name, closes the web browser, comes back, it forgot the name. And of course, there's reasons why you might want to use session storage, but we'll be looking at local storage, which is the more permanent one. And here's a very simple check to see if this is even available to do on a person's web browser. An if statement. Again, if this is true, do the following, or else it's false, do the following. Basically, it's saying, we're checking, um, is there storage? Uh, if it's, it's saying if it is not undefined and not the same type, <coughs> then it will work. It's sort of like a double negative here, in a sense. Um, but basically the first line is saying, is local storage available? If it is, then have at it. Or else it's not available, so something like a pop-up happens that says we cannot save your data. And then how it actually works is very, very simple. We're basically going to write local storage, capital S, dot set item, the name of the variable, and the value in the variable. To retrieve it, same thing, but with get item. So notice the retrieval is, there is some variable in local storage called last name. Let's get it, and in this case, show it on screen. So create a local storage name slash value pair with the name last name and the value smith. Retrieve the value last name and insert it into the element ID result. It can also be written much simpler like this. Local storage dot the name of your variable equals what's in the variable. And then retrieved by simply saying local storage dot the name of the variable. This is the way we're going to do it. But this is the longhand method, this is a shorthand. Longhand is you have to write local storage dot set item, the name of the variable, comma, what's in the variable. So we'll do it the short way local storage dot the name of the variable is this. And same thing to retrieve. If you want to remove an item, because this is going to save all of your variables, if you want to remove one of these items, you've got local storage remove item and the name of the variable. They're always stored as strings, as text basically. There's another example here, then session storage. We're going to skip that. Okay, let's see if we can make this work with um, well, actually, we're getting just to the about. We've only had one break, and we're getting to the time where we usually end. Is it too much of a tease if we end here? 
and then we actually do it with time next time. So if we get errors and everything. Okay. Let's, one more class. No, actually we have uh, we have three more classes this week, two classes, and then the week after that. We have time. So let's do that. Let's end up at this point. We've been going for a while. You can start to research this when we come back on Thursday. We'll actually do it so that our data gets saved permanently and we get errors and we fix it and all of that. So we'll end now. We'll have some lab time if you want it. I'll put the videos up online and I'll put my work in the folder in a moment. See, this stuff is so much fun. You don't want to stop.